On our way back from Schifferstadt to Frankfurt, we were able to film a whole armada of space car flying over, I would say, very clear to the, and very near to the Frankfurt airport. This film and all of Mr. Adamski's film, we took as we returned to Washington, D.C., and my husband wrote letters to NASA, to the Pentagon, and offered them the chance to look upon the films that were available. We got invited to all of the organization, to the Pentagon, we got invited to NASA, and during during the conversation that we held with NASA, we had 22 scientists present. And none of these scientists ridiculed what we had. In fact, they were not even interested in the scout cars because they told us the size of it, how they fly, and with what they fly. These are some of the films George Adamski took by himself. He shot this one in Mexico. A cigar-shaped craft hovers over the street. Adamski took this film through the portal of a spaceship. It shows a white disc in Earth orbit. In another film from Mexico, a luminous telemeter disc moves in front of a bush. Behind the bushes, we recognize the dome of a landed scout ship. That he was telling the truth was very easy for me because I got confirmations through um, sightings I had on my own. Uh, George had a lot of sightings and he told us how small reconnaissance uh, objects, not bigger than a tennis ball, looked. He told us that there were some even uh, uh, larger, he told us there was reconnaissance object with, with a crew, normally three normal looking people and two robots. He told us there was big motherships who carried the flying saucers into the atmosphere before they released them. He told us about objects, uh, underwater objects that could fly in space or dive. And he told us that they could dive into the water without any sign of disturbances on the water. Even if the water was completely still, it was diving just like on a trick film in a movie with, with behind a mirror or something like that. And uh, over the years, I had many, many sightings where I saw these small reconnaissance objects. I saw the, the, the uh, object with a crew. I saw a mothership and I saw two landings and so on. And nothing of what I experienced was outside what George Adamski had told us. So to me there was no problem. I had the proof that he was telling the truth. Adamski type spaceships were observed and photographed all over the world. They have appeared over Japan and Mexico, South America and England, and in many other countries. In August of 1991, one witness was able to film a landed dome-shaped craft near Carp in Ontario, Canada. The small reconnaissance probes were photographed in Denmark and the U.S. from close range. In the south of England, Stephen Alexander filmed a telemeter ball flying over a cornfield in 1990. This spectacular footage was shot in June 1973 during one of the first flights of the Concorde. The luminous small object surrounds the supersonic plane and hovers for seconds in front of its engines. Cigar-shaped motherships were seen in similar frequency. This film was taken over Rhode Island in 1967. This photo was taken over Texas in the same year, or over Lake Onega in Russia in 1978. These films were shot in 1980 over Hagen in the Ruhr area of Germany.
This official film with the Russian Space Agency was taken in June of 1992 by cosmonauts of the Mir Space Station. An identical object was photographed in June 1966 by U.S. astronaut McDivitt aboard Gemini 4. Hundreds of witnesses saw this cigar-shaped craft in April 1990 over Krasnodar in Russia. This film was taken in July 1995 in Mexico near the Popocatapetl volcano. And this cigar-shaped craft was filmed by Tim Edwards of Salidas, Colorado in September 1995. Experts who analyzed the footage came to the conclusion that the object is more than half a mile long. The mothership is surrounded by small, luminous craft. Another case from the year 1954 was even investigated by the British royal family. About two years after Adamski, a UFO like his landed up in where in the Lake District, the Cumberland, Lancashire, so up there on the side of Lake Coniston, and two small boys, Stephen Derbyshire and his cousin, took a little photograph, two photos of it, and in the second photo it was moving and it was distorted, just the way you know a golf club appears to be curved. They used to think it was bent. It wasn't. It's the movement of the film. And we compared them on orthographic projection to Adamski's, and they matched perfectly. <clears throat> so Prince Philip actually wanted to see them, and they were sent, arranged uh, it through the Queen's secretary, Sir Boy Browning, who was a very nice man, and... Um, husband of Daphne du Maurier, who wrote Rebecca, and a great war hero. <clears throat> and, and they were taken. But the deal was no press, no inkling. And the press begged me. They even said, look, just nod and we'll give you a thousand pounds. Well, I mean, today I suppose some arsehole would have sold the whole story. But, um, you know, in those days a deal was a deal. <clears throat> so they were, met him and they told their story. Finally, Lord Desmond encountered a spaceman by himself when Adamski visited England. Uh, he was going to lecture in Bath, and again he was staying with us. This was an earlier visit, not the one the Pope was earlier. So I took him to Paddington Station, and the sequence of events is quite interesting. It was a very grey, dull, dark day, okay? A porter took his bags. I said, get this gentleman a first-class seat. Yes, sir. So, we went. so the porter chose the seat, not us. We went into this first-class carriage with one other man sitting in it with this marvellous silver-gold hair, beautiful blue suit, and dark Polaroids. Why wear dark Polaroids, you know, on such a dark day? Apparently they, they don't like our light. And he radiated. I don't know what. He, he just had such an aura that I was almost knocked over. And he then took off his glasses and smiled at us as much as say, Hello, <laughs> I brought you here. I hadn't been very well, unfortunately. And I was so sort of dismayed by this that I went out in the corridor and said, George, come here. What do you think about that chap? He said, I don't know. I said, well, I think he could be. I mean, there's something very odd about him. This orange skin, dark glasses. Anyway, I'm just making it up. So then the whistle blew and the train went. Well, I wish I'd stayed aboard, because they'd no sooner got talking than he revealed himself at the secret handshake. And... Um, he said he was working as a scientist in England, pretending to be one. At that time, and that time is 1963 when he was here, he had told us...